it's incredible to see the evolution content with purpose and the why it's so much important than promote something that is 100% commercially driven, right? It's just purely aspirational and then the purpose is just to sell it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. They found that I think 63% of consumers um, actually prefer to buy from brands that have a purpose and communicate why and stand for something. It's super important that um, brands show what they are and what they stand for and that they're actually giving back. How brands can really convey that purpose and really show it with influencer marketing. The industry has shifted tremendously since the beginning. I'm Mara Genovese, the founder and CMO of Imaging Power, and this is our Influencer Marketing Uncover podcast. Today, as always, I'm here with the lovely Alex Villev, our campaign manager at Imaging Power. Together, we are super excited and thrilled to be joined by Emily McDonald, influencer marketing and social media expert for fashion, lifestyle, and tech brands. In today's episode, we will be discussing how important it is to create influencer marketing campaigns with meaningful and authentic purpose. Alex, how are you? I'm good, Mara, and I'm so excited to be co-hosting today's episode with you and with our special guest joining us from London. Emily, welcome to Influencer Marketing Uncovered, MGM Powers podcast. And uh, I would like to kick this off uh, by asking you, how are you during this time? And as well as that, to give us a little bit of uh, context to our listeners about yourself. Hi, um, first of all, thank you for having me on the podcast. I'm super excited to be here. Um, it's also my first podcast recording. So uh, special <laughs> appearance for me. Um, yeah, I'm good. Uh, you know, it's a lockdown, the never ending lockdown in London. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to keep the spirits high and stay positive um, and try to like have like these like rituals, like wake up every morning. I'm start like doing like gratitude journaling um, and do like yoga and just keep myself active as possible. And yeah, but yeah, it's, it's good to be here. Amazing. And just for uh, our listeners, I want to give you a bit of time to explain about your experience and just... Yeah give a little bit of an intro about yourself. Perfect, yeah, so I'm Emily. Um, I'm an influence marketing expert. I've kind of been in this industry before it became um, like a proper term. Uh, it was back in the day when uh, it was more like celebrity and brands. I was working with brands who uh, needed special um, appearance from celebrities or um, social influencers. Um, so yeah, I've been in the game for over, I think, like seven years now. Um, so yeah, so, but my, um, my career kick started when I was at Google. Uh, so I was a part of the team in London that created the influencer program for Google. Um, and it went um, globally, actually. So I was uh, working on the hardware team, uh, working specifically on Google Pixel, um, the Google phone. Um, so it was uh, super interesting and very exciting. So I was there for around two years. And then I took the leap of starting my own consultancy business. Because I've always won, I always wondered like, how, do, how is it to like have your own business? I had some amazing friends who had done it as well. So they inspired me. So I worked with um, a broad range of uh, clients, um, such as The Guardian, I did a project for them. Um, I worked for a charity called the Lady, Lady Garden Foundation. And then I consulted with different um, influencer and PR agencies, so helping them on their different campaigns. Um, and then I actually uh, consulted Bumble and um, kind of was tasked to create their always on influencer program for them. So that's kind of how my journey with them began. Uh, so I did like a three month um, consultant um, assignment with them. And then 
I really enjoyed it. They really enjoyed working with me. So I came um, a full-time employee last year. Um, so yeah, and today I've actually, I'm back on my own adventure again. So I recently left Fumble and I'm now back at consulting. So yeah. Amazing. And um, thank you so much. And then I'm so excited to say that I had the opportunity to work with Emily uh, while she was at Bumble. And uh, yeah, so, so happy to have you here. And I think together at your time with Bumble, we have achieved so many great results. And it's very linked to what we're going to talk today about, you know, creating authentic and campaigns that has purpose and has meaning. And I think that it's really kind of, you know, in line what you have achieved at your time with, uh, with Bumble. So it will be, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here and, you know, talk about everything influencer marketing. And I'm happy to hear it's your first podcast. So yeah. it's starting with Everything Power. So it's very good. Uh, again, super happy to have you here. So I wanted to start this conversation uh, asking you uh, your view on why do you think that purpose is so important nowadays for brands when creating campaigns that, especially on today's cluttery digital world, where you know every day when you go to navigate it on Instagram, on TikTok, or Twitter, there's so much content for us to to absorb and you know to engage with. But we feel as you know as an influencer market agency that. As more we do campaigns and create a strategy for our clients with more purpose is when we see the engagement and the interest of the target audience to be linked to the, the content. So I'd love to hear, you know, your thought uh, around this, this subject. Yeah. So I think it kind of goes back to like the meaning of purpose, which is why, and it kind of the story, like, why do you exist? So kind of like, it's it's super important like it's what you stand for your values um so brands need to have a purpose they need to really communicate that uh with everything they do today and kind of going back to what you were saying it's such a cluttered uh market right now and especially with last year with the pandemic happening uh black lives matter it's super important that um brands show what they are and what they stand for and that they're actually giving back because if you think about it people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it um and it kind of goes back to like i think it's like simon sinek's like the 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 importance of why and not what <laughs> um and also like i think it was like accenture that did like a consumer research thing around like they found that I think 63% of consumers um, actually prefer to buy from brands that have a purpose and communicate why and stand for something um, uh, instead of just buying from brands that doesn't really clearly state why they exist today. So it, you, know, it's, you need to have it basically. And, it, it, it's amazing to see it because uh, when um, you were introducing yourself, you were talking about that you have been in the industry for like seven years and it's pretty much the same time as I am. And I don't know if you can feel that shift because when we started seven years ago, it was all about the aspirational content, right? Yes. So it's, it's yep. all about the picture perfect content, right? to create, you know, to your audience, uh, an aspiration of going to the hotel that the influencer is staying or buying the car that yeah. the influencer was showing in the picture or having the outlook and the bag. And for me, it's so fascinating how this whole influencer marketing has evolved from seven years to now, uh, especially, of course, because the generation like the millennials and now the Gen Zers, they mm -hmm. are, growing as well in terms of age and understanding of what they wanted to engage and what they don't think is, you know, it's a, it's a worth the engagement because there is no value and there is no purpose. So it's, a, it's incredible to see the evolution and to see that we are leading to that direction, right? That content with purpose and the why 
it's so much important than promote something that is 100% commercially driven, right? It's just purely aspirational and then the purpose is just to sell it. Uh, and I think this element is, uh, is going to be key for any type of brand and service uh, moving forward. Uh, to link into that question, so how do you think the purpose and the brand transparency can impact on the, on the brands and commercial goals, like let's say, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, which is something that our clients, they challenge us a lot, right? If I'm investing on a budget for a campaign, I wanted to have my ROI, right? Uh, but yeah. we are engaging with our clients that yes, but to get your ROI, we need to make sure that what we're going to create together, we have something, a message or a purpose, right? In order to engage. Yeah. So how do you feel that in terms of purpose and brand transparency to get the brand's growth on their commercial goal? I think they, they, they need to... Uh they need to, in order to grow and in order to commercially be successful, they need to have that transparency. They need to have that uh, voice, the brand, the tone of voice for a brand, it's so important. And it kind of goes back to uh, you, you like you going shifting to like brands, like people don't, but believe the brands of like people's like with the product, like the, it, it can't be product focused. It needs to be consumer focused. Cons customers need to be in the center of it. It's super important that also brands understand what's culture relevant and what actually people care about. Like how can they help their consumers? How can their brand help their consumers live better lives, uh, giving back to the community? Um, so I think it's it's super vital that when then creating an influencer campaign that the brand needs to co-create, first of all, with the influencer, but they also need to understand where their um, shared values meet as well. They need to have that and that needs to be uh, put together. And also it needs to... Uh, it's just like, it's because you would, you would need, you would, um, the brands, like the consumers, basically they they believe um, the recommendation from a friend or people that they see on social media, people that they look up to, uh, people that they can relate to. So um, it's super important uh, for brands to kind of involve influencers, but also match making it so that they um, they have influencers that have the same again values that they do so and M, just to 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 your uh, comment here that you said about culture relevance right yeah and culture voices i think there is still uh, a mystery behind what is really culture voice and what is really culture relevance uh and coming from the experience that you had at bumble where we together have created some campaigns that was very uh, led to focus on culture relevance and, and you know culture voice. I love you to explain to your to our audience what it is cultural voices and culture relevance. So culture voice and relevance is basically you are understanding what is going on in culture right now. What are people talking about? What are people uh, consu consuming? Uh, what are they listening to? What are they watching on TV? Uh, what, um, who are they, like, like for example, what podcasts are they listening to? Um, and also what type of news do they follow? And really, and then a culture voice is then understanding, okay, they see what's going on and then they have an opinion about what's going on and they can also lead that as well. So you're using um, your platform for a greater uh, cost basically for good so that these are people that are driving um, culture driving the conversations of tomorrow um, and it's super important for like for example uh, for Black History Month uh, October last year Bumble um, we did a campaign around uh, my my love is black love and where you were championing uh, 
the the love stories of black people because they were never heard properly in um, mainstream media. So we basically um, so Bumble let, let basically they uh, sh they share the voice or like they share the mic with the voices so they were heard. So it's basically providing a a platform for voices that hadn't really gotten the attention that they deserved or um, should have had. So it's again kind of uh, kind of having those authentic transparent conversations uh, that will lead for, to a better uh, society and a better tomorrow. So. Yeah, definitely. I really want to delve more deeper into how brands can really convey that purpose and really show it with influencer marketing. But before we move on to that, I really want to ask about we spoke about your seven year experience in the industry and starting out from where everybody wanted to work with celebrities, everybody wanted to work yeah. with the influencer that had like, you know, 10 million followers, 5 million followers. And I think that now uh, we're moving more into brands actually working with the nano influencers, working with the micro influencers. And just wanted to ask in your opinion, is that where the industry is moving and how important is that for brands to really convey that purpose to work with the names that really stand behind what the brand stands behind as well? Yeah, so I think the industry has shifted tremendously since the beginning. So, you know, in the beginning, it was all about like the people that had a million followers. And I think that's like the one common mistake a lot of brands have done. And I see some are still doing that. They think they only want to partner with uh, influencers that have X amount of followers because they think that will get the most eyeballs and that will have the highest conversion rates. Uh, now we know that that's not always true as well. And, um, and I think that's one thing you, at the end, we're in the people business. So it's not just a numbers game. Uh, and I think it's super important that brands, when they select influencers that they want to work with, they need to also understand that this person represents much more than just, than just their social following. They, you have to make sure that the person, the influencer, uh, who are they? Like the personality, what have they talked about? Uh, who, um, uh, other brands that they worked with, are they brand safe? Uh, do they share the same values? How is the content that they're creating? Uh, can you see that that also works with uh, your brand's content as well and the kind of your aesthetic? But when it comes like using micro influencers, uh, mid-tier, macro, mega, it also depends on um, the goal for your uh, influencer campaign and what you're trying to um, do. Are you trying to get more brand awareness? Then you should have better success with working with um, macro influencers, mid-tier influencers, because they do have a higher reach and they uh, usually tend to have more um, uh, eyeballs on their content. While um, mid-tier micro, you're kind of, they have a more um, engaged audience so if you're looking at engagement and kind of conversion, they can also be very successful. So it depends on the, the goal of the campaign, but I would also say that um, nano and micro influencers can be as influential uh, as a celebrity, or they can even be more. It depends on what you want to achieve from that. Yeah, definitely. And in terms of like really defining that purpose, you have worked with so many brands that, you know, they have defined their why, they know what they stand behind and they convey it with mm -hmm. their influencer marketing efforts. So if you were to work with a brand now that has just defined, you know, what it's about, they've defined their why and they want to move into the next step of like defining their influencer marketing strategy, finding who to work with and really like creating a project that's going to create an impact. Uh, what would your like top tips be uh, for the next steps that they need to take? So you need to understand uh, their target audience. It's super important. Um, they need to, like, so who are they talking to? 
because uh, that will determine uh, what type of influencer uh, you would want to work with. Um, and usually when it's an up and coming brand, like the new brand, they usually tend to need brand awareness. That's the first thing they need to know because people need to see their content in order to understand what they're about and before they kind of go into this consumer journey of actually engaging with the brand. Um, so I would say you need to uh, yeah, understand your target audience, or what's your, um, define your goal. Um, also understand how big your budget is because influence marketing, it's uh, not cheap. <laughs> it's, uh, they, it's a business now. Um, the influencers also understand uh, how much they can charge and how valuable uh, their content is and their voices. Um, and then you also under, need to uh, understand like, okay, so which platform um, do you want to be on? Is it Instagram? Is it video led? Is it more audio led? You know, now with like podcasts and clubhouse coming in. Um, and then um, also have a, a proper uh, understanding of what exactly you want uh, this kind of partnership to look like. Is it long-term? Is it short-term? Um, do you want to have an ambassador role? Um, but yeah, I think, but definitely you need to understand your target audience because uh, when selecting the influence, you need to uh, also make sure that that influencer will reach the audience that you want um, yeah. to target. And um, like very interesting comment that you made it here about uh, the influencer marketing is expensive. Uh, yeah. uh, and it's, I'm very happy that you, you mentioned that because again, I think uh, being in the industry for so many years now, as well as I can see the shift from big celebrities and big number of followers, I can also see the evolution in terms of pricing, right? Mm -hmm. and, because before influencer marketing influencers, they didn't even know how much they should be charging because it was all very new, right? And at the beginning, all the metrics that we could see it was the number of followers, comments, and likes, right? Yeah. So influencers were charging based on, okay, if I have, you know, 1 million followers, I must cost much more than an influencer that has 200,000 followers because I have 1 million. And now it's completely different because an influencer of 200,000 followers sometimes can charge the same as an influencer for 1 million followers. And why? Because now we have access to many more metrics than we had it before. Now we can see the average engagement rate. We can see the average impression that, that influencers is, is, is adding. We can see the average of views. So it's much more information that we have access. And mm -hmm influencers also can have an access and then for that uh, they feel that now they are uh, in charge of really pricing according to what value and results they will bring into that campaign so it's not about you know how many followers uh, do you have uh, so but the question here is sometimes it's not every brand that understands that right yeah. uh, because sometimes for, for brands, they don't really understand why a micro influencer costs, you know, that much versus a mega influencer. So I would love to 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 hear from you on on in your thoughts about, you know, why this has changed, like as we have, I just mentioned to here, and how to convey in a more, you know, uh, not convey, but to explain to clients and brands that influencer marketing, it's not as cheap as sometimes we think it is, but the investment on influencer market sometimes can add it much more conversion, awareness, and reach than if you go for traditional media as we used to do in the past. Oh, exactly. And it's, it's, it's a super interesting uh, conversation topic as well. Like. Um, so again, it kind of goes back to um, the insights that we have now, like uh, on Instagram, on YouTube, you can pull all these insights on how an, um, an influencer and how the content is performing as well. So you have much more data points to back up the price as well. But you also sometimes have these brand like influencers or um, tastemakers that 
not necessarily have X amount of uh, followers, but their their offline presence as well is so influential that um, they can also charge a lot of money um, for it because they know that their their voice people will buy in. They believe in that. They will buy into it. And um, I think also when it comes to influencer marketing in general, like you know. The, mo the most powerful sales technique is still word of mouth. It's the recommendations. Uh, so it kind of goes back to um, the trust as well. So some influencers, you know, they are, you know, like now, especially in 2020 and 2021 now, like you see that the, the influencers content and what's actually performing really well is less glam, more real, uh, less filters um, and kind of they just want to sh like uh, kind of relate with something they just want like that friend like influencers now uh, have become like you, you feel like you know them even though you don't know them um, and when they are transparent and when they kind of give like a, a product review or like and, like a, you know like oh I love this I've been wearing, like wearing this people buy more that into that than a brand would do if they uh, created a post on it. So it's, 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 it's so um, much more trustworthy. And also, yeah, again, people buy more into the why and uh, it's more, I would say like, no, it's not safe, but like, it's, again, it's just more tr trustworthy and people will buy it into it. And also with, the behavior now, everyone is on social. Um, and now with influencer marketing, if you, um, if they have, they usually tend like, oh, these are the top recommendation of products that I use. You can easily just go and like easily buy it if there's a tracking link or something like that. So it's, it's easier and a, a more efficient way to, um, kind of promote like your brand and what you stand for but you're using a trustworthy voice that is like an extension of your brand voice. Again, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I was about to say, I guess with influencer marketing, and as you said, like it, it just completely changes the way that, you know, they're going to look at the influencer post. And if they trust that person, they're a lot more likely to actually buy the product than if they see it from an influencer that, you know, they've promoted like multiple brands like that, or they've promoted like multiple products and, and their like level of, uh, um, of like credibility is a lot lower, I guess. Exactly. And that's kind of why it goes back to the importance of when selecting uh, influencers to work with. Um, it's super important that they already have kind of talked about um similar to like, talk about products or uh, values or services that are similar to your brand and what you stand for because it's then you you know that that person knows what they're talking about and they would only recommend uh, something that they really really believe in and uh that they would stand for so again it's kind of goes back to the purpose and the why and it's much more trustworthy and um it's kind of like if you look at amazon like you would trust uh you all everyone looks at the reviews like what are people saying about this product like they don't really go to the brand's uh, website and do their uh research they look at what are people saying about this brand so it kind of goes that peer-to-peer -peer recommendation again and then let's not forget about how can influencers generated user generated content right yeah something that we keep educating you know clients that this investment can also generate added value pieces because influencer can influencer their community, right? Yes. Uh, we recently, uh, we, we've done a campaign for Biosense, which is a, a clean beauty skincare brand. And with Biosense, it's amazing to see it that every time we work with an influencer and all the content that we created together with them is very educational about what clean beauty is and why clean beauty is important to your well-being. Uh, and as soon as the influencer content goes on air, very authentic. And again, going back to the purpose, right? Because mm -hmm. to have a brand that's clean, that's good for environment, 
we are talking about the why, right? Why that brand is here and why this brand is creating this product that's good for you. Uh, it's unbelievable the UGC content that we, we, we sometimes can see throughout these campaigns because if an influencer is trying a product and is saying, oh, this is very good for my skin, it's clean beauty, look how the fact that it's a brand that stands for, you know, this, this and that. Yeah. So their community, they go, they buy the product and they share. I'm just using this product because I saw that, you know, the influencer X used and she post and I love it and I bought it. So it's so important for brands to also, you know, understand that, uh, an investment can add value on user generated content and then can expand, you know, your brand voice into a very trustworthy community, right? A hundred percent. It's kind of just looking at, you know, how going back to how Glossier launched, oh, yeah. it was all user generated content, you know? Um, so just kind of about that. And also like TikTok, you can see all these like uh, beauty tricks that goes like viral and suddenly like everything is sold out. It's just kind of, it just shows the, the effect of it and how influential it can be. Absolutely. And let's talk about audio now because we just got yes. out. <laughs> it's just like, it's a, it's a new platform that everyone is talking about. And like, it's uh, incredible to see how fast, you know, this platform gains attention. And most impressive is to see that people are using, you know, mm -hmm. and they're engaging with it. And, you know, it's, I don't know for you, but it's becoming an obsession for me. And then like, Midnight, I'm on the clubhouse and listening to like <laughs> podcasts and like, oh my God, go to bed. It's midnight to have to sleep. But the conversation is so engaging. It's so interesting. So, and now Twitter is talking about launching as well and, and now the future within yeah. the platform. So what's your view on that? What do you think that audio will, uh, you know, become, especially within our industry for the marketing? I think it's super interesting. So I'm, I've been on Clubhouse now for like a month or something. I say. I'm, I'm still in that, the listening part. I haven't like started a room or anything like that yet. I'm kind of like observing and navigating through it. Um, but it's super interesting because it goes back to, because it's just, it's so raw, you know, it's just the voice. There's no glam. There's no uh, cameras or like showcasing like, uh, like what are you wearing or how you look and where you are or what you're eating or who you're with. And basically it's just, it's your voice. Um, so I think, and also like you're getting access to people that you would never, ever be able to like access before. Like you have Gary Vee, you have all these, super influential people, uh, industry experts there, and you can join a room. And the one thing that I think it's also super interesting about is like, you know, people are pitching their business ideas on it as well. And people can get like funded through it. Like, through this. like and you, cause you know, like if you have a question, you can basically get access to the, those people that you wouldn't yeah, be able to talk to. And I also think um, it kind of goes back to you know, the storytelling and uh, kind of showcasing what you are about because through, um, let's say like on Instagram, but like you can't really tell everything, like a whole story via caption or a, um, like a, a short form content video or like TikTok is very short. Uh, while audio, you can actually go into depth and share knowledge and, um, no, so I think it's it's super fascinating. Um, and I think, because right now, like, you can't really, there's no branding on it either. And, like, all the influences are on Clubhouse right now. So it's, you kind of, you get to tap into, uh, tap into knowledge that you wouldn't be able to. So it's it's super fascinating. And it, I'm, it's going to be interesting seeing how it will evolve, though, for influencer marketing and how brands will they be or will how will they be able to tap into it because right now i don't think you're not able to like create any ads or anything like that but i think it's more of an uh, opinion piece as well so like the clever way and how i kind of see it kind of going is you know you have spoke people from brands starting rooms and kind of discuss discussing uh, a topic that's relevant to your brand 
and using influencers as well, talking to, on it. But that's kind of where I see it going right now. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, if it's just, will it fade once like everyone's out of this pandemic? Will, uh, cause people will like be more, like they want to have that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, but yeah, like it was also interesting, like what do you guys think about it? Like Myra, I know you're active on it. Like I think- the thing you said that you can just have an access to everyone and then i just remind oh my gosh this is monday because monday gary v has one club every monday at 8 p.m which calls ask me anything yeah and i go there every monday and i ask questions and he replies <laughs> back to me you know what i mean like so every monday is for me like oh this is the monday i have to have you know my mentorship on the club yeah <laughs> No, yeah, honestly, it's kind of like the new, like, mentorship program, I would say, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. And it's free as well, you know? But sometimes you raise your hands for, like, for the audience that's listening here. If you haven't tried Clubhouse yet, so basically you go on Clubhouse and then you can join a room. And uh, when you're there in the room, if you, have to, if you wanted to ask a question, you have to raise your hands. But if the room is, is so many people, sometimes you never know if they will actually take you to the stage or not. But yep. when they do, you go like, oh my God, I'm in. <laughs> so I can ask a question. And, uh, and it's amazing. So I am super fascinated. And I, I do believe that audio content will play a big role uh, within not just inclusive marketing, but the digital mm. experience like on a, on a over, overall, uh, because as you said, I'll do it, uh, it's something that it's just your voice, you know? And then if, if you think of what you're being discussing today about cultural voices, cultural relevance, when you go to outdo content, it's only about your voice, you know? It's really yeah. showing like what you're there for, you know? There's nothing you can hide, it's you and your voices you know, talking about subject or adding your point of view there or, you know, sharing uh, values and things that you believe and you don't believe and, you know, mm -hmm. work and how you're doing your work. So I'm very interested to see how this audio, you know, um, way of communicating will evolve in 2021. But I think it, it's going to play a big role. I yeah. think in terms of uh, Clubhouse, just to add on what Emily was saying, I do think that the future of how like influencer marketing on Clubhouse is going to look like is sponsored rooms by brands and really like having those spokespeople there. And uh, in terms of like monetization as well for like creators, I've uh, saw that Clubhouse is discussing having like a subscription to different rooms so that uh, that way the creators of those rooms can get uh, monetized and can get like incentivized for being on the platform. Unfortunately, I have an Android, so I don't have access to Clubhouse yet, even though I got I have an invite, but it's uh, all fascinating stuff and it's going to be really interesting to see how it develops in the future. Exactly, and I also think, again, like with audio as well, you pay more attention to what's being said um because we live in this like scrolling uh society you know and it's just like you yeah you're just more attentive to what's going on um yes. so yeah no, but it's, it's it's super fascinating like people spend like I've, I've seen like people spend up to like eight hours on clubhouse like daily <laughs> i wonder like you know like come on like but i think people are spending eight hours because they're making business there as you said yeah yeah, I, I basically, I, there was someone saying to me that they're finding Clubhouse much more um, um, better than LinkedIn when it comes to uh, networking, um, because you're you're getting to like accessing people and uh, following them and kind of like following up with um, different like yeah, like it's just like it's a better way of networking now because it's also more transparent and people are more honest because you know LinkedIn it's much more polished. You know, so. And one advice that talking about Clubhouse and Gary V, uh, he had, he actually said that like if you're in Clubhouse, raise your hand, you know, start talking. Uh, yeah. You can make much more networking on this platform. And he said the same thing 
when it comes to LinkedIn, you can still make connections and have your network, but you don't have the access of talking to the person, right? Mm-hmm. And on Clubhouse, it's, it's all about, you know, raise your hand and let's talk. And everyone is very open to listen to you because they understood that the platform is there for us to make connection and, and just talk through. So it's, a, it's fascinating. So looking forward to see how this is going to, to, to evolve and how Mark will quickly add audio features. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's waiting for it. <laughs> I'm sure he's not sleeping right now. He's no. <laughs> to create that feature. So, um, uh, and just moving a little bit from audio, how about new technology, you know, AR, like the virtual reality, and how can we bring virtual reality and can still added the purpose into a content like it's completely virtual uh, it's super interesting because like i personally i haven't worked with any like virtual influencers i haven't done any campaigns with them but i know like little michaela and uh it's been super successful um and it's a it's a fascinating um it's a fascinating industry and that's also like how will it look like but the one thing that i recently read about is also like it's, it's, you know, like working with virtual influencers, it's kind of less risky, if I would say, because it's not, you're not dealing with the person, you know, human beings makes mistakes, you, you're not. Uh, so when working with influencers, you, you don't know what they will do in five years, or, you know, when we saw the whole, like, everyone fleeing to Dubai, um, you know, like, these are, like, stuff that you will most likely avoid and it's easier uh, to work with them when it comes to like uh, posting regulations uh, and stuff like that. But one thing I've seen like in fashion, um, a lot of uh, founders who don't want to be the face of the brand because today every brand needs to have a face. They need to have that human touch to it, you know? So I've seen um, people then tend to like want to use virtual influencers because they can kind of like make these influencers, these personas fit with what their brand stands for, their purpose, their values, their mission, their vision, um, and kind of can, form uh, this influential voice through uh, a virtual reality. Um, so I think that's like an interesting one. I think you'll see more and more of that actually coming uh, forward because like just looking at what happened in 2020, there were so many founders that had to step down because of um, things that they have done in the, in the past that was not ethically right or was uh, not aligning with the brand values and their mission. So um, that's how I see it. And also it's, but the one thing with virtual um, influence, like they don't have that human touch, you know? So like today's world, especially with the pandemic, you kind of need a person that you relate to. So how relatable are these virtual uh reality influencers like that's that's kind of like the one thing that i'm kind of like yes i see it it's cool you can shape them but at the same time they they're not human yeah they're missing that relatability so um but yeah i don't know have you guys worked with any uh virtual influencers no actually we haven't worked with any virtual uh yet uh, but we, I would love to have a challenge to, to do one King yeah. involved. Although I'm on the same page as you, you know, like what is the human connection in there? So that's my, my big question mark, especially to your point after, you know, 2020, we all clear understood that the human connection, the face to face is so, so important. Uh, not just for, you know, for influencer marketing, but for our life, right? What we are missing the most now is to hug people, right? Yeah. Say, oh my God, <laughs> no, I can really have that, you know, human connection and the virtual reality, you know, the virtual influencers, they don't, um, they don't add that human, you know, connection. So again, you know, let's see how, you know, how can we shape them to perhaps add that element into it, but I don't know the answer yet. But I would love to have the challenge to 
to be able to work not just with the virtual influencer, but also to create a virtual experience. Experience, yes. All about gaming design. industry has done that. Yeah. So I'm very interested. I have been seeing so many brands uh, creating incredible. Uh, virtual reality experience because now retailers, you know, they're all closed, right? So shops are not there. And even yeah. when they open, let's be all honest here, like if we go to, to an airport now, uh, what was the most, you know, fun thing to do when you're at the airport to go to, you know, to the debt free and then try all the products and makeup yeah. and skincare and have all the, you know, the music, it's so loud and you have three hours to wait for a flight and then you go, so now the experience won't happen even when we all get the vaccine, right? Yeah. So how to create the experience on trying products through virtual reality. So I think this is going to become a big thing, especially for um, makeup brands. and Yes. No, 100%. No, it would be, be interesting to see uh, how this space will involve. And we can stay here forever because we love <laughs> talking about influencer marketing. I think Alex has one last question for you uh, to wrap up. Um, Alex, I will pass to you. Yeah. Uh, as Mara said, we can stay here and talk for hours. But <laughs> to wrap this up and just wanted to ask. We spoke a lot about like audio, about like virtual influencers, and just want to ask, in your opinion, where is the industry headed? Where is in, what is the future of influencer marketing? Oh, big question, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still think it's just going to get bigger and bigger. I think it's slowly going to become the, the normal how you advertise, how you promote your brand. It's space. It's going to be it's going to take over because like traditional uh, media and traditional advertisement is, it's not just, it's not cutting through the way influencers are doing, especially when it comes to um, Gen Z. Like these are the, that's the group now that actually is going to be, have the most spending power in the coming years. Um, and they, 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 you, they, you need to have your purpose, your why, your story, there so they understand why why they should be part and why be part of that and why they should buy your brands as well um and your consumer goods so i think definitely um audio video as well uh going to be super important and also short form content i think that's not going anywhere um especially when it's video i think it's going to still uh short-term content and also um, what I've seen is the entertainment uh, aspect of it is super important, especially in the, the times that we're in right now. Um, it's kind of how do you combine purpose, storytelling, entertainment, but as well as educational. Education is going to be super important. Like um, like TikTok now, it's more uh, focusing on education uh, than just entertainment. Um, as well um so and i also think it's gonna change the way we shop as well <laughs> it's gonna be completely different um the shopping experience is gonna be uh yeah it's gonna be driven by influencers uh you know live shopping is very interesting <laughs> as well what's coming there and there's like this speculation about like youtube now um adding like that um shopping uh feature to um uh, YouTube videos as well. So, um, no, it's, it's, I think it's just going to grow and um, evolve. Amazing. Yeah. I totally agree with you, Em. I think influencer marketing is not going anywhere. I think it's just going to continue to grow and more and more, you know, all social platforms, like you just mentioned, YouTube and Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, they will all continue to evolve and add more elements into their apps. Uh, and the social commerce, uh, which is like, you know, shopping through influencers. I think yeah. that's something that we're going to continue to hear a lot this year. You know, it's all about, about social commerce, but how to create your social commerce through the voice of influencer to create an impact, but also to sustain, right? Because the, yeah. the, the, the challenge is create impact and how do you sustain that impact? Uh, yeah. is a, it's key. 
Emily, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I wish you could stay here for a few more minutes. <laughs> no, thank you. This is amazing. So fun. <laughs> We're so happy to have you here on our Influencer Marketing Uncover podcast. We have launched it last year and then we have, to have had so far amazing guests and such a pleasure to have you here talking to us. Oh, yeah. Again, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> amazing. Uh, for everyone that's listening to us today on this incredible podcast with Emily. So we're going to add Emily Bile on the description of this podcast with her email address. So you can contact Emily if you wanted any more information about her experience or any advice that you would like her to give to you. Thank you so much for everyone that's listening to us today. If you have not start following us on YouTube, Spotify, please do now. Every week we have a new podcast with a new guest and we continue to be super excited to bring all these insights and trends about the influencer marketing industry. Thank you so much. And thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>